Okay friends, welcome to third grade data part two. This video is about creating bar graphs. Now make sure anytime I ask you to pause the video, be sure to do that and complete the activities that I present to you in this video. So sometimes you might need to pause the video to gather supplies, work out a problem, or to think about a question and develop your own answer, okay? It's very important for you to take an active role in your learning by pausing the video and trying things on your own rather than just watching the video straight through. At the very end, there's going to be an exit ticket or a task of some sort to help you show everything that you've learned. Your teacher will let you know how to submit your, your exit ticket answers. And if you ever need to rewatch the video to review, that's totally fine. Watch it as many times as you need to. Okay, go ahead and grab some supplies. You're going to need um, a dice and you're going to need some lined paper. Go ahead and pause the video and grab what you need. Okay, so let's go ahead and generate some data using the materials that you have. Data basically is information that comes from some sort of source and we like to create graphs so that people can see and understand that data easily. So the data that we are going to generate is the numbers that we roll on a dice or really you just need one so it's called a die. But what you're going to do is create a tally chart for the numbers one through six. Those are the possible numbers that you could roll on your dice. So we're gonna do our number rolled and the number of times it was rolled. Okay, so I could roll a one, two, three, four, five, or six. This is where your lined paper comes in handy. I'm drawing all of the lines, but if you have a piece of notebook paper, it's really easy just to create your tally chart. Okay, so you're gonna roll the die 25 times, and every time you roll it, I want you to put a tally mark next to the number that you rolled. Go ahead and pause the video and generate your data. Okay, so your data may look a little different than mine, and that's completely fine. I actually don't have a dice at, I don't have any dice at home for some reason. I can't seem to find them. So I used a random die generator online. I just did a Google search and found a digital dice that worked for me. So I got the number one twice. I got the number two six times. The number three, I got three times, ironically. Number four, I got five times. The number five, I got four times. And the number six, I got five times. Okay. So your, like I said, your data may look different than mine and that's okay. I'm gonna walk you through the process for taking this data and turning it into a bar graph. And then you can do the same with the data that you generated. So one of the first things we need to do is to give our graph a title. In this case, we are rolling dice. So we can name our graph numbers rolled on, on dice. Or on a die. It's just one. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is prepare to make our bar graphs. We need to decide on what kind of scale we're going to use for our bar graph. Again, if you have lined paper, it's going to be a lot neater than probably mine looks. Looking at our data, there's really not a whole lot of data points for each one, so I could probably count by ones on my scale. I could count by twos, though, if I wanted to, okay? Let's start by counting by ones and see how that turns out. One, two, three, four, five. It looks like my greatest value is six, so I just need one more line up here to be six. Okay, now I need to add my labels for the bottom. I need space for each bar, for each of these data points. So I could have rolled a one, two, three, four, five, or six. So now I gave my graph a title, I have my scale in place, I've added my labels. 
Now it's time to show my data. So I rolled a one two times. So above my one, I'm gonna create my bar that goes up to two. You know, it would be a good idea for me to add more labels. Just thought about that. These down here were the number rolled. And over here, these were the times that it was rolled. Okay, so one, I rolled two times. The number two, I rolled six times. So that's gonna be a nice tall graph all the way up to six. The number three, I rolled three times. The number four, I rolled five times. The number five, I rolled four times. And the number six, I rolled five times. You see, when you display data in a visual way like this, it makes it so much easier to see and to interpret. It's very quick and easy for me to see. I rolled ones the least. I rolled twos the most. I rolled just as many sixes as I did fours. When you create a graph, it makes it really easy to see the information. Okay, so try this on your own. Pause the video and create a bar graph that shows this information. Remember to include your title, your labels, okay? Make sure you pick a scale to use and show all of this data exactly as it's shown here. Okay, let's take a look at how this would be shown in a bar graph. Now, you may have made some different choices than me in creating a bar graph, and that's okay. As long as it makes sense, it's fine. Okay, so the information I'm given here is the number of students that chose these different colors as their favorite. So I'm gonna give my graph a title, and it's going to be students' favorite colors. Okay. So now, I need to decide on what scale I'm going to use. Now when I look over here, I've got some pretty large data points. I've got 13, 5, 10, 14. So it would be a good idea to not count by ones. I don't really want to draw 14 individual lines. So what I could do is use a different scale. I could count by twos. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. Again, having lined notebook paper will make this a lot easier than drawing on a whiteboard. Okay, but now that I've chosen my scale, I'm going to add my labels. So this was two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. 14. Okay, and that was the number of students. And the colors that I'm going to show on my graph are blue, green, yellow, and pink. So I've got blue, green, yellow, and pink. Okay, so for blue, I have five, 10, 13 students. Now, I don't have 13 as one of my lines, but I do know 13 is right between 12 and 14. So I can draw my bar there. Green has five, 10, 14. So I'm gonna draw that bar all the way up to 14. Yellow had 5, 10, 12. And
and pink had the least with five, just six. Okay. So you, have, you may have made some different decisions on what scale you used or exactly what you titled it. And like I said, that's okay. As long as your graph makes sense and has everything someone would need to make sense of it, you're good. Okay, so as your exit ticket, I want you to create a tally chart on a piece of paper and list the following materials. Wood, fabric, metal, and plastic. Now, walk around your home or outside and tally all of the objects you can find based on what material is used to make it. Like my desk, for example, is made of wood. So I would tally my desk in the wood column or in the wood row, okay? I want you to find at least 20 objects to include on your tally chart, then represent that data with a bar graph. So pause this video right here if you need to, if you need that information to create your tally chart and submit your answers to your teacher. Thanks so much for watching and happy learning.